What's up? What's up? I am back. Yours truly, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast. This is episode 134. Of course, I'm going to try to bang out these episodes um, every day of the week, pretty much, during the playoffs. Especially because NBA playoffs, there's like games like every, you know, every single day, you know, or every other day. So first things first, hit that like, hit that share, hit that comment, hit that follow. Um, Don't forget that the audio version of my podcast goes to uh, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker, iHeartRadio, Player FM, Podchaser. Podcast Attic, and much more. Um, let me go ahead and start uploading some videos for my sponsors here. Always got to shout out the sponsors. Definitely got to show them love and show them promotion. Um, don't forget the video version of my podcast goes to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Rumble. Hit that follow on Rumble because the videos are already monetized from day one. And... Um, Then I'll take the video and I'll stream it live on three of my Twitter accounts, which is Twitter at Paul P Podcast, Twitter at Paul W Pickett, and typically Twitter at Promo Palace LLC or Twitter at Indy Castle. Um, First things first, we're going to get into some scores. But before we do, let's give you a message from our one of our sponsors. Me and my team will never be link up They're gonna be drink up We still gonna relax and have few glasses When there's things to think about Like I'm nice with the bars When I tend to the bars And I'm not talking drink pops So tell the bartender that's into the bar that Please pass me a big cup of And tell the waitress that's waiting on us To put a little ice in it Now watch the ice become weightless Like the spaceships that I be sitting in No waiting list I'm never waiting for that tropical twist That'll pick a your taste buds Now taste up uh, Now I insist it's the Dizzle. That was the great Foo Snickens member, Chip Foo, one of the world's fastest rappers of all time, was in the Guinness Books of World Records at one point, if I'm not mistaken, doing a Dizzle commercial. And at the end, as you see, that was Mike Dizzle, the creator of Dizzle. So check out DizzleBrand.com. You can get the merchandise, you can get the hats, get the tees. They got sweatshirts hoodies the works also go to dizzlebrand.com click on our locations and you can get yourself a nice bottle of dizzle brand premium luxury liqueur order it online dizzlebrand.com our locations the top three links will be online order links for your very own bottle of dizzle and Click on store if you want to buy the merch, the Dizzle Brand of merch. As you see, Dizzle Brand was established in 2001, but was officially bottled for purchasing last year. And Dizzle Brand is a black-owned business. Let's go. Um, First things first, pull up these scores. I'm only really going to get into one topic today. Um, I thought I picked Brooklyn, and Brooklyn lost to Boston. Um, Philly beat Toronto at the end with a game-winning shot by Joel Embiid, and Chicago beat Milwaukee. And of course, I'm going to pull up these box scores. Just to give you an understanding of why what team you know why I'm two on three it's off the three throw, free throw line Kevin Durant hits his shots they win this game Kyrie Irvin only put up 10 points you know everybody to my oh Kyrie's gonna Kyrie is going to go in and, and spank Boston next game. He's going to put on a show because of the fans. I couldn't tell. 
Seth Curry scored more than he did. Seth Curry put up 16. Yeah, 23 from Bruce Brown. I mean, Bruce Brown ain't supposed to be scoring more than Kyrie or Seth, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Nets are in trouble. They're in they're in deep, deep trouble. Boston has got that every all their players are playing defense hard on both ends on the other end, you know, and they got good offensive players as well. Everybody on the Nets ain't playing super hard defense. Kyrie ain't playing super hard defense. I can tell you that right now. Jalen Brown put up 19. See, this is why Boston won. Same reason Minnesota uh, Memphis won the last game. 19 from Jalen Jason Tatum, 16 from Al Horford, 15 from Daniel uh, Tice. Uh, Jalen Brown, 22. He was leading the score for Celtics with nine for 18. Um, 12 points from Marcus Smart and 17 from Grant Williams and 10 from Peyton Pritchard. They had seven players score in double figures. When you got seven players scoring in double figures, you win in the game. So Celtics up 2 nothing. Brooklyn's in trouble. If Boston just wins one game on the road, series is over. Let's pull up this box score from the Sixers in Toronto. Um, man, Sixers are looking dangerous. Danny Green put up nine. North Carolina Tar Heel, baby. Um, Tobias Harris put up 11 and 12, double-double. I mean, what more? You don't need more from two. And one steal and one block. Double-double, one steal, one block. What more can you ask for? Uh, 33 points and 13 rebounds from Joel B. Long with the game-winning turnaround three. Tyrese Maxey put up 19, four, and three with a, a steal. James Harden gave you 19 and 10 and six, man. Four to start five scored in double figures, three of them scored 19 or more. They didn't get much for the bench, but they didn't really need it. Because, I mean, you got 26 from OG and OB, 12 from Pascal Siakam. He definitely didn't do much. Fred Van Fleet. Fred Van Fleet and Siakam hit their shots. Toronto wins this game. 20 points off the bench from Precious uh a kosher, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he put up twenty off the bench. Um, they didn't get nothing from their starting center. Two points and two rebounds in fourteen minutes. Yeah, Toronto's in for trouble, man. This series is over. It's three nothing. There ain't much more they can do. Chicago. and Milwaukee. I'd have had Milwaukee win his game. I didn't really think Chicago was going to pull out, but I didn't count on DeMar DeRozan put up a 41 a rebound. And then you got um, 24 points, 13 rebounds from Nikola Vujicic. 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 Vucevic, I could never pronounce these European names, man. Y'all got to excuse me. Um, I'm, I'm kind of like uh, Shaq and uh, Kendrick Perkins when it comes to these last names. Zach Levine put up 20 and three assists. Then you got nine points and 10 assists from Alex Caruso, who played star point guard for the night, along with two steals and two blocks because he's a defensive beast. And he only had one turnover. You know, so that's pretty much it. you. Pretty much, Demar Derozan and you know Nikola Nikola uh, Nikola Vucevic and Zach Levine put up a twenty piece themselves too. Um, that might be the only game Chicago gets though. But this is the thing though. Um, oh man, they just won this game on the road. So this is going to be an interest. This could be a very interesting series. I mean, Chicago was like number one and two most of the season. And then they started plummeting like the last few weeks. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, the game's on tonight. We got Memphis and Minnesota. I'm going with Memphis. Dallas and Utah. Um, 
I don't know if Luca's coming back, but Dallas won last game without Luca. They could win again, but Utah can't let them win again. But I'm almost like agreeing with some of the people where they said Dallas can afford to let Luca just rest one more game. And Luca could just come back and win three straight games for Utah because Luca would clearly be the best player on the floor. I like Donovan Mitchell, but he ain't no Luka Doncic. I'll tell you that much. And then you got Golden State and Denver. Uh, uh, I'm going to go with Denver. I'm going to say Jokic finds some way to pull out a win. I don't see Jokic getting swept. And if Jokic gets swept, I kind of agree with um, what somebody was saying. Like, that's why we need to vote MVP after the season is over. You need to vote MVP after the season. You can vote everything else. You can vote first team all NBAs, second team, third, um, rookie of the year, defensive player of the year, coach of the year, most improved. And right now there's only one person that, oh, that's got one award uh, that's so far been picked. And Marcus Smart, which I, I forgot to bring that up. Marcus Smart is Defensive Player of the Year um, pretty much for this year. I would have picked Mikael Bridges. But Marcus Smart, I mean, he did have a lot of steals. He did have a lot of steals. He had more steals than anybody. Um, Mikael Bridges had was well more balanced with steals and blocks. And then, um, of course, you had Rudy Gobert, who had mainly blocks. And if Utah loses to Dallas, if they lose this next game without Luka, even if they win the series, you could pretty much be you best believe that they're going to be broken up. They're going to be, you know, they're going bye-bye. You best believe that. All right, um, before I get into my topic, let me get into a word from one of our sponsors. A musician looking for music marketing and promotion? Then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one-stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube video promotion, record pool promotion, blog placements, radio airplay promotion, SoundCloud promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. That is my beautiful, lovely spokesperson for Promo Palace LLC. I actually need to get a few more. Um, She's a fiber. Got her on Fiverr. Fiverr is why I do like Fiverr. You can find a lot of good professional people on there, um, you know, doing high-quality services for a low price. So I definitely need to get another spokesperson. If you need online market promotions, definitely go to Promo Palace LLC. We pretty much do everything, SEO, um, social media ads, press releases, blog placements, playlist pitching, TikTok influencers, Instagram influencers, uh, music video promotion, and much, much more. I um, How much time I got? We got 14 minutes. You know what? I'm going to get into this little list I got here, and then I'm going to get into my topic. I'm going to go through this list of um, some of the greatest beefs and battles in hip-hop history, and I'm going to pretty much give you a rundown of who I felt won the battle and pretty much why. You know, um, NWA versus Ice Cube, one of the greatest battles ever. I think this might be the most significant and upsetting battle ever in beef ever because for one reason and one reason only, Ice Cube took out a whole group. Ice Cube came out with no Vaseline, and there was nothing NWA – and I repeat, nothing NWA could do after that. There's nothing they could say or do. So the fact that one cat took out a whole group, man, in a beef, that's crazy, man. That is so crazy. It's got to be one. Of, it's got to be definitely one of the greatest and most disappointing, I would say, because of like 
there's no way I could be a part of a group and we lose to one dude in a beef, man. It can't be. That can't be happening. Um, and Cube was actually part of another beef, which I'm gonna get in a second. One Cube versus Common, which he lost that one. I had. I hate to say it, but when Common came out with the bitch in you, like Common was known for like just a mellow. Um, lyrical, philosophical kind of rapper, you know, and he came out with I Used to Love Her, and he he made a statement in there where he said, um, now she's hanging with the boys in the hood or something, but I didn't mind. Like, he, it wasn't really a diss. It, was, it wasn't a diss. He was just basically explaining the timeline of hip-hop of, you know, now, like, the West Coast was running hip-hop at that time. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't a diss, but Ice Cube took it as a diss. And why he did, I don't know. But he definitely lost it because Common went in and crushed him, man, in the bitch in you. Um, this next rapper was actually involved in two beefs, which he both won. And um, actually, I'm going to save him for last. I'm going to save him for last because I think his is the most dominating beef ever. Um Little Kim and Foxy. I don't truly remember why the beef started. Um, I know I felt like Lil Kim was a better rapper. I mean, not Lil Kim, but I felt like Foxy was a better rapper. Her voice and everything, her delivery. But Lil Kim definitely won this battle. Lil Kim definitely won this battle. Um uh, I don't like Foxy's not even like where is Foxy nowadays? Where is Foxy? Uh, Jay Z and Nas. Nas won this battle, and I told my friend the other day. I know that people are gonna say this is blasphemy, for me, but Jay Z did Nas a favor on the Blueprint. And the Blueprint by is is an amazing album. It is it is by far a perfect album. Is it's pretty much a perfect album. And the disses on there were like, whoa, you know, it's like. <sighs> but he, Jay-Z did him a favor. He pretty much poked a dying bear somewhat. The way I explained it is Nas was kind of fizzling out. He was like the bottom of the 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 Coke bottle, where it's flat as hell, there's no fizz to it. And then Jay Z poked the bear, and pretty much helped resurrect Nas' career. Nas' music career was was on a decline. I don't care what anybody says, and I'm not saying Nas is not a great artist. Nas has probably, I think he has two of my top ten art albums of all time, maybe three, maybe three of my top ten. But this idea that just because you're an artist that I like, that everything you make is just great and it's gravy it's good to go no that no there's so many artists that lose focus of what made them who they are and how they got where they are you know what i'm saying you can never lose focus of that even a cat like joiner lucas who i have a lot of respect for i feel like he's losing focus of what made you the artist you are why you got the fans you have and it's because these deep concept music videos that I need to see, you know, I need to see every so often. And that's the thing. If if you got to at least give us a taste every so often of what made us become a fanatic of you, you know. But Nas was fizzling out. Jay-Z poked the bear. And Nas came back with one of the greatest albums ever. Songs like Rewind, where he rapped backwards. Um, everybody said he crushed him on Ether, but I felt like he, got a, he crushed Jay-Z on the Got Yourself a Gun. Because I think he took it to a whole nother level of I it ain't rap beef no more. It's like when I see you, you know, I hope you got yourself a gun. And it had that soprano sample. And then he Nas ended up going in all the Queensbridge cats. So he he made it bad for other cats too. Um LL Cool J versus Cannabis. Um LL Cool J won the battle. He won the battle, but I don't clearly feel like LL Cool J had the better battle record in that battle. And 
the reason why LL Cool J won the battle is the reason why most of these cats always win the battles is the fans side with they either got more fans than you or they or a lot of your fans will side with them. Now, Cannabis' second round knockout was clearly to me like the better of the battle records. But he said something in his battle that's always stuck with me. It's always stuck with me. He said, 99% of your fans were high heels. Okay. So I thought about that for a second. You know, I thought about that. All right, let me get my beak wet on that. 99% of your fans wear high heels. I I get where you're coming from, Cannabis, but LL Cool J has 99% more fans than you do. And that's how I looked at it. Like, okay, so what? Like, 99, if 99% of my fans wear high heels and I got 99% more fans than you, I'm having a great life. I'm doing I'm doing something very well. I'm doing something good. I must be doing something right if I got 99% more fans than you and they all wear high heels. <laughs> I don't have a problem with my fans wear, wearing high heels. It means a lot of women love me. A lot of women want want me. So I, I just thought that was the dumbest, like, like the dumbest line I ever heard, man. Like, uh, that's your, like, that's what you're using? 99% of your, wears, your fans wear high heels? Okay, well, I got 99% more fans than you, and so what do they wear high heels? Ladies love Cool J. So, yeah. Um, and then that's why this next battle, Meek Mills versus Drake. Once again, it's the same thing. Meek Mills can hit him with that. 99% of your fans were high heels line to Drake, but Drake has 99% more fans than Meek Mills. And not enough Drake fans are going to say, whoa, Meek Mills just killed Drake because he didn't really. He didn't. Meek Mills ain't a battle rapper, first of all. Drake's flow is more fit for battle rapid. Like, Meek Mills' flow is the same on every song. It's just a fast, up-tempo flow that doesn't really change one bit, you know? Um, Same thing with this next one, Karis One versus Shan. Shan, like, that probably was the downfall, Shan. Like, MC Shan, first of all, was the least talented person in the Juice crew. He might have been the most loud and boisterous, but he was the least talented in the Juice crew. And you definitely wasn't on the talent level of a KRS One. You definitely wasn't going to have the fanatics of a KRS One. I don't know that MC Shan ever had fanatics back then. I don't know how many fanatics MC Shan had back then. And that's the problem with a lot of these rap beefs and battles. You know, like, unless they're real, like, we're going to kill each other over it which is one of the, the next one I'm about to get into, which was a real, real beef, is um, Biggie and Pac, man. That wasn't just so, no rap battle and, and no beef. I mean, just no rap battle. That was real beef, man. And it really could have been avoided because I think it was predicated on assumption. I think Biggie and Pac was predicated on assumption. Biggie come out with, who shot you? Separate the root from the op, hot, the leap, obsolete. I mean, like, that was just a record. Just It was just like, it wasn't specifically necessarily talking about nobody. And Pac thought it was talking about him. When there's no proof of that. I think I just think it started off assumption. This one led to, I think, um, I don't know. I can't really say. As far as Biggie dying, I'm saying Biggie probably, I think Biggie died because of the Pac and Big Death. Pac died because of his own doings. Like, Pac's death had nothing to do with the beef between Biggie and Pac. Pac's death 
had everything to do with the beef between him and somebody else. But Biggie, I think, was collateral damage in the Pac and Biggie beef because after Pac got killed, people probably assume. I mean, people still assume that Pac's alive to this day. Nobody assumes that Biggie's still alive. Nobody assumes Biggie's still alive. And I think that goes to show you that Pac fanatics are a little bit more fanatical, radical fanaticals. They still believe Pac is alive to this day just because of that Machiavelli title. I mean, Biggie's album was called Ready to Die, his first album, and then he died before his second one album came out, and it was Life After Death. And who knows if it was titled Life After Death before he died. Only Diddy and Diddy knows, and, and the people that were involved. Diddy and all the, you know, Kim and 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 probably C's and those cats. This last two battles, this was the most dominating battle in hip hop history. Was Fifty Cent versus Ja Rule? Never in my life have I seen a more dominating battle in my entire life. Never in my life have I seen. Another rapper just off of songs literally destroy another dude. Like, literally cancel. Like, you talking about cancel culture? 50 exhibited cancel culture. I, I said it in one of my other podcasts, two, three podcasts ago. 50 Cent was one of the starts of, like, cancel culture, man. Like, not intentional. Can I don't know if it was intentional. You know, I don't know if he intentionally meant to cancel this guy, but it worked. And he, I mean, he, this guy, John Rowe was number one on radio for 365 days straight. And he got canceled because no Ja Rule fans were siding with Ja Rule. They were all siding with 50. None of Ja Rule's fans were siding with him. And then it... I don't know what game was thinking, 50 Cent versus game. What was game thinking? You just saw. Now, all due respect, 50 Cent didn't kill game's career because game made some good music. Game, first few albums game made were real, real good until he started auto tuning it. And Ja Rule was just over there rap singing. He wasn't necessarily making dope albums in like game was. Game's album was just dope as hell, his first album. But what were you thinking, though? You just saw this cat just just take out the number one cat. He took out 50 Cent didn't just take out the number one cat in radio. Took out the number one cat in the game at that time. Man, Ja Rule was just dominating with hit after hit after hit after hit. He was Drake before Drake. Ja Rule was Drake before Drake. And 50 just chess game took his piece off the board. Ja Rule's music career has not recovered since. And that's pretty much been a wrap. That's that. You know, um, before I get into this last topic, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a commercial. We'll play a commercial for the Paul Pickett podcast. And then I'm going to get into my last little topic of the day. Morning, Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and more. Please check me out three to four days a week on my video podcast on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. And check out the audio version on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and much more. Peace. See you there. All right, let me get my last topic. I'm about to kick back and relax on this one. Oh, man. Um, I was watching the Disney Plus show Moon Knight. And it's pretty good. It's better than some of those other... Uh, it's better than um Loki to me and better than um Wanda and um Vision. 
I don't know if it's better than um, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But uh, I really like it because it's Egyptian. I'm infatuated with Egyptian stuff. And that's what I want to get into, man. This last topic of the day. Um, who built the pyramids? I don't believe Egyptians built the pyramids without some help of some kind of higher power. And the reason I believe that is because we cannot build those pyramids today. And we're the greatest technological advancements in mankind's history. I mean, we're flying out in space. You got Elon Musk with rockets that fly out, can fly back to the same spot. Um the internet streaming, um, railroads, the boats, planes, cars, um, internet technology. Um, I mean, just the production is still, they didn't have none of this stuff back then. We, there's not a crane on this earth that could pick up one of those tons. And you want me to believe they did it with ropes, hands, and elephants. Now I'm seeing a breakdown on this. Like, first of all, they're in the middle of the freaking desert. So where the hell did they get these big tones, ton slabs of stone in the first place? And how did they get them square? Because you sure as hell didn't chisel them by hand. I'm not believing that one bit, that you chiseled these big old ton stones by hand. So you 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 chisel one side and you what you turned it on the other side with a bunch of ropes and elephants. Man, you know how it would take a lifetime to chisel one ton stone, probably. So that's there's that. Where do they get the stones? Then if they did find the stones. And chiseled them, or however they got it, because they didn't have no lasers or nothing like that, unless some higher power or some that had some kind of lasers technology or something. But then they had to float these jokers up wooden boats, wooden boats. Um, I'm not a rocket scientist here. Not a rocket scientist. I don't got a Harvard degree, but I'm pretty sure you can't float tons of stones. Could probably float a one ton stone on a wooden boat. We use steel ships to transport those big um, tractor trailer hitches across the ocean. I mean, steel boat. There's no way. So you got a wooden boat would have to, you got to find it, the, the stone. You got to get it into a square with no kind of real technological, just chisel with hand. You have to float it up a, um, up a waterway, drag it across the desert. I mean, like how many elephants do, is there even out there in Egypt? Um, how long would these elephants last doing this crazy hard labor? Like, I mean, then you gotta like, then you gotta stack them on top of one another. Then they try to, you know, I've heard like them trying to say they use some kind of water pressure. I mean, there can't be any kind of water pressure that's strong enough on this planet that could push a one ton stone upwards into, into the air. There can't be. More or less be a there can't even be a water pressure that's strong enough to push it forward, backwards, left, right. There can't be. There's no water pressure. There's nothing that makes sense about the pyramids. To me, it's the most 
intriguing, you know, thing there is. Because, see, that's the thing. We have proof that there's pyramids. You can see the pyramids. There's no proof of Jesus Christ and some of these other things, you know. There's no proof of that. And if somebody has the proof, they sure ain't showed nobody until until people actually see the proof. It's hearsay. But we can see with our own eyes these big ass gigantic pyramids that we could not build with this to the, today with the greatest technological advancements of mankind. I mean, we built the freaking Panama Canal, you know, and like I mean, this ain't like the Great Wall of China. Like, this is nothing like the Great Wall of China, which is still an amazing feat. But it's nothing like that. That's a wall. That's just literally a wall. You know what I'm saying? Like, these guys, I mean, they just got tons and tons of stones upon tons of stones stacked upon, you know, like the Great Wall of China. That I could see man did, and that seems realistic. But the pyramids, the pyramids, I don't know, man. I just don't know. I just don't know. Because I, I, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't think the pyramids would build anything with like the Great Wall of China, the, the things they use to build them. And, you know, from what I recall, the Chinese used a lot of just manual labor with the Great Wall of China. Now, with the pyramids, they had to use elephants and probably any, they, yeah, probably tons, they probably used tons of elephants. You know, tons and tons of elephants to move all these stones, to to do all this stuff, you know, especially across the desert land. You know, I just don't know. It just doesn't seem realistic. I know we'll never know. Um, I just honestly think somebody, some higher power helped. And according to Egyptians, I think the... Some god, the gods came down and helped them, according to the Egyptians. You know, um, I could be wrong on that, but according to Egyptian history and stuff and folklore history, whatever, I could have sworn that the Egyptians claim like the some gods, because even some of the pharaohs, I think, never showed their face. They wore masks. You know. And I don't believe one bit that out of all these planets, and they say there's more galaxies, where this is just one galaxy, all these planets, I, I just can't believe that life only existed on just this one planet. You know? It just doesn't, it, do, it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. And nothing adds up and makes sense about the pyramids. You know, I just will forever always think that, in my opinion, some greater force, higher power, whatever you want to call it, God, gods, Pharaoh, whatever you want to call it, help them. You know, I almost think, I almost think it's just like Alien and Predator, Alien versus Predator, one. Where the the predators came down and showed the the um the Egyptians and the Mayans and all them how to build how to build uh civilizations and build um, pyramids and build monuments and statues and stuff, you know. Because some of this stuff is just too. It's just carved too perfect. It's just shaped too perfect for it to be, for me to think that it was done with chisels, with just chisels. I just really feel like 
there had to be some kind of laser technology that they had access to and some kind of I don't know, some kind of machine or some kind of force that could lift ton these big old ton rocks. I just can't I can't buy in the fact that it was done with hands and ropes and and elephants. I, I mean it would take every damn Egyptian on the planet, I would think, to lift one of those ton stones on top of another, man. And they're probably those st stones probably weigh way more than a ton. Let me pull it up. Let me Google this. How much does one stone on the pyramids weigh? Two point five tons. So I was, yeah, it's it's actually two point five tons. I mean. Two tons with just rope, hands and elephants, and they had to get them. I mean, this thing's perfect, man. Shape perfect. Um, it just doesn't seem realistic. It just doesn't seem realistic. One bit without having some kind of greater technological advancement than we have today. And if a greater, higher power came down and helped them. They could have had that technological advancements that we don't have today, you know. And who's who knows? Whatever the higher power, I mean, it could have died off. It, it might not have lived forever. I mean, nothing lasts forever. Nothing lives forever. I know people think you know. There's a God that we're gonna live. There's life after death, eternal life, life and all this. I have it tattooed. On my arm, eternal life, right here. But guess what? I don't believe in that. I don't believe in life after death no more. Um, I don't believe I'm going to heaven or hell. I just believe it's complete darkness. I mean, once you're gone, you're gone, and that's it, you know? And if there's anything that I wish I'm wrong on, that I hope I'm wrong on, is that there's life after death. And that there, you know, I don't believe in heaven or hell one bit. Not one bit. You will never get me to buy into heaven or hell. There's no proof of that. But who knows if there's some kind of life after death, some kind of consciousness after death, you know. But I don't believe it is. And that's why I got to make the most of today. And I worry about tomorrow later. Later. Um, once again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in, uh, episode 134, um, you know, please leave a comment or whatnot. Give me your opinion on what you think. Um, who built the pyramids? Do you think the Egyptians just did them by themselves with just ropes, hands and elephants? Or do you think somebody, some greater power force, no matter what you want to call it, what you want to describe it as? help them because that's what I do because you know I just don't think that if we can't do it today it's hard for me to believe that it was something that they could have did back then I don't believe in magic I don't believe in spells hocus pocus Merlin the magician none of that um I believe in geniuses and even geniuses, I mean, can only do but so much. Even mankind can only do but so much. I know we keep trying to reverse engineer everything. We keep trying to just do things. Every, you know, artificial intelligence, just whatever we can. Anything that's the mind can imagine, mankind is going to try to accomplish it, go forth out and do it. Which is, can be a good thing. And it could be a bad thing, you know. So there's that. Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. Common Sense Podcast. Your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and more. Peace, and I'm out.